Singapore prides itself on being a clean and green city. It has designated 2019 as the year towards zero waste and is working towards becoming a zero waste nation by reducing consumption of materials, reusing as well as recycling them to give these materials a second lease of life. Amongst the many types of waste that are harmful for the environment is food waste. Have you ever wondered why people waste food? Well, answers could be quite obvious, but it could be subjective too, to each individual. Maybe you're too full to finish your dish, or you probably lost your appetite, or you might be prioritizing wants over needs. Aha, uh -huh, who amongst you are feeling guilty right now? But let us take a look at a wider scale, shall we? Let's see what my friend Nadia has to say. Over the last 10 years, Singapore's food waste has only been increasing and never decreasing. In 2019, 744 million tons of food waste was generated in Singapore. This is almost equivalent to the mass of 51,000 double-decker buses, if it isn't a shocking figure in comparison to the small population here in Singapore. Hold up! Let me tell you what food waste is first. Food waste is separated into two, avoidable and unavoidable food waste. Avoidable food waste refers to food items that could have been consumed if better managed. Examples of avoidable food waste are leftovers from a meal, expired food, and blemished fruits and vegetables. On the other hand, unavoidable food waste are parts or portions of food which are not intended for consumption, such as bones and eggshells. Now, wouldn't it be interesting to know what are the impacts of food waste? Well, my friend Ayman would like to share some of them. Yep. Thanks Nadia, we claim that we are aware of its impacts, but are we? Really? Ah, firstly, the whole process of producing food emits a lot of greenhouse gases, which contribute to the increasing temperatures. Gases like methane are produced from animals and carbon dioxide from industries. Furthermore, no livestock takes up the land to be played football on, and the gas emissions from industries might be your OOTD. Let us now take a look at the context of our school. We found that alternate students claim to waste a handful of food after each meal and sometimes even more. Fortunately though, most students admit that this is not the right thing to do. Mr. Adip, would you like to share with us more? Near Chinggu, we conducted a survey to investigate the issue of food waste within students in Marasa Junior Al Islamia. The survey helped us to find out their attitude and opinions towards this issue. Generally, from the responses that we have gathered, we found out that most students often or always completely finish their food without throwing any leftovers. This is a good sign that food wasting is not a habit or not always practiced among most students. Despite so, we also took into consideration the times when the students do have leftovers. In these cases, there are students who waste a handful and even more, but these are not the majority. Fortunately, most students voted that food thrown away is mostly less than a handful. Hmm, then what are the reasons for wasting food? Majority answer that they couldn't finish their food, mostly because the quantity of food given is too much. And secondly, because the food was not up to their standards. Not delicious, cooked differently and others. Not up to their standards, huh? Well then, what did you learn about the students Attitude towards food waste. Their attitude is reflected through how they feel about wasting food. Majority said that they dislike wasting and hence will try their best to avoid it. Many others admitted that they felt guilty but still resorted to food waste. Thus, we can see how most students are aware of the drawbacks of food waste but still do not practice zero food wastage. Then, we can also see that Junidians generally possess a good attitude towards this issue. This is most likely due to the exposure of Islamic values. Instead of throwing it away, more than half of Junadians would rather pack their leftovers or give them to others or even try their best to finish their food despite the reasons mentioned earlier. Wow! In my six years in Arjunid, this is my first time hearing about Junadians' attitude towards food waste. What are some ways to preserve our food instead of wasting it then? In order to prevent food waste, many preservation methods can be done in order to prevent an item from being damaged or contaminating. The benefits of preservation are to prolong shelf life as well as to maintain the food or ingredient at its best quality for consumption. 
On top of that, the purpose of food preservation is also to prevent and to limit food waste. There are many ways where preservation can take place. For example, salting, dehydration or drying, fermentation and freezing. Clearly, there are also many other ways of preserving food. However, these are the most accessible and easiest ways to do so. Interestingly, chemistry plays a very significant part in these processes. The first biochemistry process involves microorganisms such as bacteria, while the other involves and specializes in enzymes. Microorganisms like bacteria grow on moisture? Yes, they do! And you can simply prevent them from growing by eliminating moisture. Fruits and vegetables are examples of moisture content food, which explains why they become spoiled more quickly as compared to other kinds of food. Therefore, what we can do to make fruits and vegetables stay edible longer is to dry them. Well, you can simply heat them under a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius which is not too hot to cook them, but it's the perfect amount of heat to make them dry. Then, place them inside a sealed bag afterwards. The higher the temperature, the more moisture of the food will be lost, hence reducing the rate of bacterial growth. You may want to take note that bacteria grow most rapidly in the range of temperatures between 40 degrees Celsius and 140 degrees Celsius, doubling in number in as little as 20 minutes. Although you may refrigerate them, preserving fruits and vegetables by drying their moisture content is more effective as it serves the longest shelf life as compared with other preservation methods. Brace yourself, the shoe raw will get more sciency with you. But don't worry, it's still simple enough. You had probably faced the problem where your fruit starts browning shortly after you cut or bite into them. This is due to a process called enzymatic browning, where an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase ultimately produces melanin which causes your fruits and vegetables to brown through a process called oxidation. This process will cause your fruits and vegetables to not only brown, they will degrade over time, lose their quality and eventually people will just throw them away. So what should you do when you find yourselves unable to finish your fruits and veggies halfway through eating them? Instead of throwing them away, you can try dipping them or soaking them in vinegar, lemon juice, a salt solution or even milk because these acidic environments prevent enzymatic browning where the enzymes either stops working or slows down. So these might alter the taste of your fruits but fret not, they'll still taste good. How to preserve your food To extend the longevity of food, firstly, it is important to anticipate how much one can eat and separate that portion before you start your meal. Remember, always use cutlery rather than your bare hands to ensure the freshness of the foods. Secondly, keep your food away from direct sunlight in class. For example, under the desk or in your air-conditioned classroom. Heat encourages bacterial growth and we obviously don't want that. Lastly, pick up parts that deteriorate fast and discard them, let's see, the chili sauce and mayo sauce in the burgers from store too. Discarding the sauce ensures the foods retain their crisp and taste. Likewise, uncooked food such as raw meat, poultry and seafood must be chilled or frozen as soon as possible to prevent it from spoiling. Such food goes bad due to the presence of microorganisms such as mold and bacteria which causes proteins to be broken down quickly, thus spoiling it. As we all know, bacteria can breed to levels that are unsafe and unsavory for human consumption and you can stop this. Even with the many methods of food preservation, food will eventually decay or spoil. Because of fast mass production of food, a lot of food spoilage will occur. So, how do we deal with this problem? Hakam, would you like to share with us? Sure. Biogas is a type of fuel that is naturally produced from the decomposition of organic waste. When organic matter, which are common-based compounds like food, break down in an environment void of oxygen, they release biogas. It is a blend of methane gas, carbon dioxide and trace amounts of nitrogen, hydrogen and carbon monoxide. This methane gas is then used as fuel for electricity or any machine that requires combustion engines such as cars. Wow, are you able to share the process behind the production of biogas? To take a closer look at the conversion of waste to biogas, Biogas is a type of biofuel 
that is naturally produced from the decomposition of organic waste. The waste is broken down in steps. Firstly, bacteria breaks down the insoluble organic polymers in the waste. Then, acetogenic bacteria take over. They first break sugar and amino acid into organic acids. Then, they further break down the organic acids into more hydrogen, ammonia and carbon dioxide. Lastly, the third type of bacteria called methanogens take everything that isn't carbon dioxide already and convert it into carbon dioxide and methane. A byproduct, digestate, is also left over, which can be used as fertilizer. This way, the popular belief the amount of waste going into the digester is almost equal to the amount coming out. However, the quality of waste is altered for the better, meaning that there is less other, better fertilizer, and organic load is reduced, hence, there is less pollution. Wow, that's cool! Does biogas entail any other benefits? Of course, it includes lower carbon footprint since biogas is a type of clean energy. It comes from recycled or renewable resources that could otherwise end up in landfills and contribute methane to the atmosphere, which is a worse greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide as it traps more heat. In fact, the utilization of biogas for enhancing energy generation has been implemented by the National Environmental Agency, or in short, NEA. This has been done through a collaborative project with Shengxiong. Treatment of used water sludge with food waste mixture was able to increase the production of biogas by approximately 40% according to the trial done by NEA. The biogases produced are used as renewable energy resources in water reclamation plants, making them more energy self-sufficient which means they do not need to depend on energy from outside sources such as burning of coal. Wow, that's very interesting bro. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Hmm, I wonder if there's another solution to this. After what Hakam said, I'm thinking about many other solutions. Iman, what do you think? Hmm, I'm not sure. Dini, what do you think? Food waste is unique as a compost agent and it is the main source of organic matters which means that food waste can be processed to become organic fertilizer. Food waste has a good biodegradable rate which can reach up to 85% and has great recycling value with many characteristics such as high organic matter, high water content and abundance of nutrient elements. Oh, but how has this been implemented in Singapore though? Iman, actually in Singapore, there are already owners of premises such as schools, hotels, as well as shopping malls who are working towards segregating their food waste and using on-site food waste treatment systems to convert um, food waste into organic fertilizer. Wow, wait wait, how do the food waste treatment systems work? Okay. How these food waste treatment systems work is that the organic food waste undergoes fermentation in the system and then the organic fertilizer will be accumulated. The process is said to be not only efficient but also order free, which makes food waste treatments easier to be implemented. Huh. This solution can also be done on a home scale where you can also produce your own organic fertilizer by collecting your own food scraps of food waste at home. The methods are as follows. Firstly, find a compost bin or a big deep flower pot or tempayan and place it in your corridor or balcony making sure that it gets plenty of sunlight throughout the day because heat is essential for the decomposition process. Secondly, insert equal amounts of browns and greens into the bin and add a few handfuls of garden soil to introduce microorganisms into the mixture. Third, add your food waste. Fourth, Add water to your compost bin. You can either use rainwater or water from the tap. However, when using water from the tap, let it set for 24 hours to get rid of chlorine and other chemicals that will kill beneficial microbes in your compost. Compost should always be moist but not soaking wet. Next, use a fork or other long-handled garden tool to turn compost at least once a month. And lastly, when compost is ready for use, it will be a dark, rich looking soil with a clean, earthy smell. Composting can take from 2 weeks to 2 months, depending on the type of compost bean that you have. Whoa! That's really interesting! I can't wait to try it out myself! However, Iman, it's important to take note that not all fertilizer produced with food waste is or will be approved for use in organic plantations because only certain food waste can be used for the compost process to work. But it doesn't hurt to try, right? So, what can you do to help reduce food waste? Firstly, buy, order and cook the amount of food you only need. Secondly, 
practice smart food storage and preparation. An example will be placing raw meat, poultry and seafood in a sealed container or a ziplock bag to prevent the juices from contaminating other foods. Thirdly, preserve food to its full shelf life. This can be done by preheating food once in a while so that it will not go bad as fast and so on. Lastly, when eating outside, bring home leftover foods. You can reheat it at home. Let's remind ourselves and those around us of the importance of reducing food waste. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهو الذي أنشأ جنات معروشات وغير معروشات والنخل والزرع مختلفا أكله والزيتون والرمان متشابها والزيتون والرمان متشابها وغير متشابه كلوا من ثمره إذا أثمر وآتوا حقه يوم حصاده ولا تسرفوا إنه لا يحب المسرفين this verse shows that food is one of the primary sources of waste. It is mentioned that Allah condemns those who are excessive. What does being excessive mean? Yes, wasting resources. Allah instructs us to share our food with the poor, not from leftovers after it's been to the market, but on the same day it is harvested as a way to avoid food wastage. We have come to an end of this video. We hope that you have benefited from what we've shared. Let's work together towards a zero-waste nation. Thank you for watching.